everyone, welcome back to Capitier. I'm so glad that you're here again. I thank you all for uh, the messages that you have sent me, encouraging me as I studied uh, this past week, and all the prayers that you you lift up to God on my behalf and uh, for this uh, daily devotions that we have. I've missed you, and I thank the Lord for the opportunity to study the Word of the Lord again. Hey, happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. I know it's Monday now, but you can still savor Father's Day. And so here's a cup raised to you and i pray that the lord would continually bless you as you seek to follow him in shepherding your family um, into the path that the lord has laid for you hey let's join our hearts in prayer heavenly father we thank you for this brand new day a brand new opportunity to study your word thank you lord for this uh this fresh uh, book that we're about to study the book of haggai lord i pray your blessings upon us as we embark in studying your word would you be glorified in our midst this morning lord and would you bless our day today we glorify you and we praise you in jesus name we pray amen we're going to study the book of haggai in the coming days but before we do that i just thought that it would be nice to have a little bit of um, um of Bueno, no. Uh, it, it's it's good to have a little bit of uh, a time to reflect on what's going on in the in the life of Haggai and what had happened just before uh, the book was written. And since today is Father's Day, it's good to think about how the Lord our God is such a good father to us. So if you have your Bibles with you, we're gonna take a, a little bit of a detour in Jeremiah chapter twenty nine, verse eleven to fourteen. Again, that's Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 to 14. This is a very pa familiar passage. Let's read it together. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will um, seek me and find me. Uh, when you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. You know, the Lord is a good father, and uh, this passage uh, reminds me of my own dad. Uh, you know my dad? Uh, he is a, he's a pastor. He's been a pastor for many years. Uh, decades even uh, faithfully serving the lord in various capacities in uh, in churches and church plans in the mission field and uh, he's beloved by many but you know my dad has a very special ministry and that's a, a ministry that's specifically uh, geared for only two people and the two people that that ministry is geared towards is me and my sister you know growing up my dad really wakes up early in the morning uh, he's the one who who uh, wakes us up when we're sleeping he's the one who calls us to prepare for school uh, he's the one who feeds us but then the the most important ministry that i've received from him growing up you know my dad would always uh, take time in his busy schedule uh, to bring me and my sister to school and it does not really matter how far our school is there are times um, in our lives where my school or uh, it's really close to our house in fact it's walking distance but even then my dad would drive me uh, to school uh, there are times also uh, specifically when i uh, when i was in college i attended the phoebus college of bible in karuhatan and we were living in malolos bulacan my dad every every monday like today every monday he will bring me to school and then go back to malolos you know? So ganun kahaba, no? we will go through NLEX and then he'll come back. But before he drops me off at Karohatan, he makes sure that uh, we'll have a stopover at uh, either Pancake House or Starbucks for breakfast. And then we would have a, a, a father-son uh, time together. And it doesn't really matter how far our school is. In fact, when we moved to the States, he was living in Houston, Texas, and I was living in Fort Worth because uh, southwestern baptist my 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 seminary was there uh, but still my dad would bring me to school whenever i come home to, uh, from school to uh, for vacation in their home he will drive me up that's around five hours trip and then he will come back to his home and whenever he he drops me off at school he would always tell me he will he will always uh, pray for me 
I always pray a very heartfelt prayer that the Lord would bless me and would keep me close to His heart. And then just before He leaves, He will always say these words, Stay close to Jesus. Stay close to Jesus. And that's the ministry that myself and my sister have received from Him. I know my dad is watching right now. No pa? Maraming salamat sa ministry mo sa amin. Uh, talagang uh, ramdam na ramdam ko yung pag-ibig ng Panginoon sa buhay mo. And, and you know, looking at that verse, uh, that reminds me of how good God is because He's a God that knows the plans that He has for us. Now, there, there are four things I want to share to you this morning about, about how God is a good Father to us and uh, about His plans you know, that He has for us. And the first uh, thing I want to share to you about the Lord and how good of a Father He is is that number one, the Lord, you know, allows His children to go through times of trials and hardships for their good. There are many times in my life I didn't want to go to school. But then my dad knows better than I. You know, if there's an exam, when there's a classmate I don't want to see or a teacher I don't want to meet, I don't want to go to school But because I just know I'm going to have a hard time. But still, my dad motivates me and he brings me to school. Uh, so it is with the Lord. Uh, the passage we read today says, no, specifically, very interesting, verse 14, we'll pick up there. He says, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. So you see the, the idea here is the Lord, it is the Lord who had driven his people into exile uh, to be captives uh, of another nation. And we started that in the book of Habakkuk, no? And, and this is something that the Lord does for us, and it is for all our good. Yes, I've been James, James 1, uh, verse 2 to 3. Count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when, not if, when, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So here, you see the idea, no? That the Lord allows us to go through trials. It's not an if, but a when. It's like in the Philippines. Uh, it's not a matter of if, no, there will be a typhoon. We know that there's going to be a typhoon this year. It's a matter of when. It's definite. It's sure. It will come. And trials comes in many kinds. But then the passage today says, you know, when you go through trials... We we should let it run its course so that we might be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. Sometimes the Lord drives in times of trials and that trial lingers on. In the case of the Israelites during the Babylonian captivity, it took them 70 years in Babylon before they came home. Uh, and, no, and, and there's really no exemption to this. Everyone goes through that. The Lord allows us to go through seasons of suffering. Even Jesus had to go through that. Remember Matthew 4, 1 and 2. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. So you get the idea? Jesus even was led by the Lord into times of trials and testing. And uh, this is something that the Lord does for our good. That's the first one. Now, the second one, the Lord seeks His children's welfare and is concerned about their future. You know, trials and testing come, but the Lord knows the plan that He has for that season in our life. The Lord seeks our welfare. Diba yun yung sabi? For we, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for evil to give you a future and a hope. Yung welfare, the word welfare there, is actually the word shalom. Means a holistic, inward, outward peace. All sides of your life, that there's peace in your life. And the Lord allows us to go through trials and testing. That's a part of His plan so that we would have a future and a hope. So, we should, not, we should not really be uh, angry at the Lord when we go through trials because that has a purpose in our life. Hebrews 12, 7-11. to Let me read it to you. It says, It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom the, his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good that we may share his holiness. 
Look at verse 11. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So discipline comes from a time for a time and it's painful and it's uncomfortable, but the end result here is peaceful fruit of righteousness. Again, 2 Corinthians 4, 17 to 18. This light and momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison as we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Transient lang. This discipline lasts only for a time, like Psalm 30 verse 5 says, His anger lasts only a moment. His favor lasts for a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. This trials and testing, this wilderness experience that the Lord leads us into, this is not forever. It has no final word in our life because this is only temporary. It accomplishes a purpose and the Lord will lead us out of it. Number three, the Lord desires to be with his children. He wants to commune with them. Like a father. That's one of the things that I should work out in my life. I should call my dad more often and text him more often. Because like a good dad, you know, the Lord also desires for us to commune with him. Look at verse 12 to verse 14 of Jeremiah chapter 29. God says, Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. It's interesting because the reason why uh, the people of Israel was uh, taken captive by the Babylonians, big reason for that is they never really called upon the Lord. They called upon other gods. But here God says, if you seek him with all his heart, with all your heart, you will find him. It's really not hard to find God even in the times of trials and testing. The Lord wants to find us and commune with us. In fact, the book of Haggai picks up on this because the first thing that the Lord tells his people to do after the Babylonian captivity is build the temple. And that's the story of Haggai. And the temple is the place where God and man can commune with each other. But more on that in the coming days. So that's number three. Number four. Number four and finally, the Lord himself restores his children. He saves them and gathers them back uh, to himself. Uh, listen uh, to, uh, again, uh, Jeremiah 29. Starting from verse 14, I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. The theme here is the Lord will pick you up. He drives you in times of trials and testing, but make sure about it. He himself will pick you up. Hindi ka lang niya susunduin ka pa niya. He himself will do it. Nobody can restrain God. Even times of trials and testing, we can overcome it because the Lord, He's the one who brings us there and He's the one who can take us out of it. So those are the four things I just want to encourage you today about the plans of the Lord for us. You know, the Lord allows His children to go through times of trials and hardships. For our own good, the Lord seeks His children's welfare and is concerned about their future. The Lord desires to be with His children and He wants to commune with them. And the Lord restores His children. He saves them and gathers them back to Himself. I pray that this is a blessing to you. Before your coffee gets cold, let's join our hearts in prayer. And I pray that your, ble your day would be really be blessed by the Lord. Lord, thank you for our time together this morning and thank you for bringing us back here to be together and study your word here at Capetira. Would you bless each one's day? Would you be glorified in everything we do? We love you, Lord. We glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. See you again tomorrow.